Hi, I'm Aiman. Welcome back to one of my auto repair videos. In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove and replace the starter for a 2007 Honda Accord, which also applies to 2002 to 2007 Honda Accords. This is Uncle Saba's old car, and today we're trying to repair it so that my dad can use it. Alright, so the first thing to do is to disconnect the battery. I'm in Milwaukee here, we're just going to loosen it. that aside. Okay, now we're going to take the cover off. And it's just these two nuts right here. Find a safe place to keep these. I'm going to put them here. Now, we're going to take the cover off. Okay, so that's the cover, extremely dusty. We're gonna put this away. And now we have access to the inside of the engine. What we're going to do now is we're going to take this manifold off. And in order to take it off, we need to take off this bolt right here. This bolt, this bolt, this bolt. Uh, apparently there's supposed to be one here, I believe. Oh wait, no, over here. And then I believe there is one at the bottom. Okay. So let's take these off. Is it 12? Is it 12? Okay. Oh, it's not fit. Okay. Alright, so we're going to go from right to left, or right the outside to inside. Ooh. Okay, so that's what one bolt looks like outside to inside. Okay, we're gonna crisscross every time we take a bolt out. That's a, uh, that's a nut. I'm gonna recover that with the telescope later. Very careful with these uh, nuts. They can fall through the manifold, and like you said, can get lost down there. You need to recover them with a magnetic tool. There we go. So we have a narrower one. Just get that in between there. There we go. Always have this tool on hand, just in case you're working with the engine. It is terrible to lose a part under the hood. Okay. And then lastly. Okay, so now we need to take out a bottom a bolt at the bottom near the support bracket. That's a very tricky bolt to take out, so you're gonna need to use an extension. Move the radiator hose to the side. and get it on there. A very tricky bolt. Now we're going to loosen it. Okay. Okay. Wait, hold on. Okay, so I guess we're going to feature the Milwaukee again. Okay, let me just take that out. There we go. Oh, this last bowl is very tricky. It's gonna be even trickier to put it back in. We'll put this aside. Next step is we're going to pull back this uh, intake manifold. So just pull it back from this side. It's gonna hinge on this side right here. And we're going to unhook this wire right here. 
All right, so we're actually going to take out the hose entirely. I'm gonna get a plier. Okay, so we're going to pull this out. Just wiggle it out. Okay, and that should give us some room to pull this out. Now that we have the intake manifold off, if we peel this back, you can actually see the starter down there. The problem is, we didn't expect this, but there's this unit here that is blocking us from accessing the starter. Now, not all cars have this, but because this is a guide, we're gonna attempt some ideas on how to remove this. And the first thing I we're gonna do is gonna try to peel things back, like these clips right here. Maybe take this hose out. And then we're going to take out these two bolts here to see if we can try to remove this. All right, let's try peeling this back. Okay, so let's do this hose first. Move this up and then use a hose pliers to take it out. This might be too big, actually. Okay, we have that out of the way. Let's try taking this out here. Or actually, let's try peeling it back and see if we have room. Okay. All right, so we're gonna keep this back by using a bungee cord. And if you have a short enough cord, you can probably loop it around here. But because we have a super long cord, we'll loop it around this hose, around here, and then pull it back here. Okay, so now I'm going to try to take out these bolts with the Milwaukee. Okay, so here's the thing. My dad has worked on many, replacing many starters on many cars. And so far, after taking out the uh, intake manifold, he gets direct access to the starter. This car is very unique uh, in that it has this unit here that we've never seen before. And we don't know how to take it out. So your car probably will not be like this. Maybe some years are different, but if your car does not have this unit, and you just want to replace the starter, then you can skip the next few minutes of this video uh, because we're, after we take this out, we're going to go directly into the starter. Uh, but if you do have this unit, maybe you have the same year as we do, same model, then stick with us for the next few minutes because we're going to be going the unpreferred route. This is the route we wanted to avoid. We're going to be taking out this entire assembly so that we can take out the intake manifold and get access. Okay. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take these bungee cords out. I'm going to put this back on. Be careful. I'm going to put one. Oh, that's my ring. Okay, so we're going to put one of the nuts back on, just to secure it in there while we take the rest of them off. We're going to take off this hose and. After we take off the sews, we're going to get access to this assembly, which we can take apart. So in order to take off the sews, we're going to separate it from here. We're going to take off this clamp, and then we're going to undo, unscrew this clamp. All right, so we're loosening it, and I think at this point we should be able to take it out. Maybe we have to loosen it more. Okay, let's try pulling it out. Be careful. And then we're going to work our way up through these hoses. We're going to pull this out. Actually, I probably could have done this with my hands. No, I'm not gonna risk it. All right, so I don't wanna break this one, so I'm going to put the clamp back on. And then we're going to remove the other one. If you can't remove one of them, just remove the other. This one's a different color. Ah, that's interesting. Okay. Mm 
Okay, I'm going to squeeze from here now. All right. Okay, so, you know, just as a forewarning, uh, you don't have to take this hose out, but the reason that we're taking it out is so that in advance we can show you what you might need to take out. What you could do is you could probably leave this hose on and access the bolts that you need to take out uh, while moving the hose around. But just in case, we're going to take this out so you guys can get a view of it. All right, so that's the uh, intake hose out or the air filter hose out. And okay, so now we're going to try to take out everything that has an easy connection. So we're gonna go for all the cables and the hoses, not the screws yet or the bolts, but actually there is one bolt right here that we need to take out. We're going to take out this entire assembly so we're going to remove this cable right here, move these hoses, remove this cable right here, take out this bolt, because this bolt is securing this wire to this assembly, and then hopefully we should be golden. Okay, that's the clamp that doesn't work. Oh, I should be going horizontally. Okay, and then lastly, this one. Let me see, is there anything else? Oh, down here. Okay. Yeah, and then I guess lastly, that bolt. So to see if everything worked, we're going to take out this nut and then try to lift the entire thing. Okay, I feel some tension. That might just be due to this wire. There's something at the bottom. Oh, right here. Okay, so there's a, a cable down here. Let's feel around for the way to take that out. Okay, so the button is in the back, so we just need to click that and pull this back. Oh, what? Anyway, so this is what the, what the connection looks like. I think I, uh... Oh, what the? Okay, so I felt this button right here in the back, but it seems like there's also a button here. I'm gonna just try to unhook it from here. Okay, so it looks like this button over here is a red herring because the button is right here. What the heck? What's this for? Alright, so let's try lifting this out. And if there isn't enough space, then we're going to take out this coolant tank. But, because what I'm trying to be uh, safe about is the bracket at the bottom. Oh, there's another cable. What? Let me see. Okay, so the cable is connected to the bracket. Um, all you have to do is push, pull that out. You guys can see it, right? This cable right here. So I just need pliers. 
This is why they caught they charge so much for labor at <laughs> mechanic shops. All right, so we uh, broke it. That's all right. We can always just zip tie it. Uh, I think we also have a replacement for this one. That's so no biggie. Okay, so now we should be able to take out the inti intake manifold. Whew. Look at her. That's what the inside of your engine looks like with this mysterious black part right here. So because we don't have to take this out, we're just going to put these screws back in just so we don't lose them in the future. Leave this somewhere safe. Okay. So now we have direct access to the starter. Now, if uh, you followed what I said before and skipped to this uh, part of the video from earlier, you might not have as much of a clear access to it. But if you also went with us in our journey, that's a nice classic car. It's a shame that they're on the gas every single second of it. But if you followed us with the video, then you probably also have as much access to the starter as we do. But in any case, let's take out the starter. So this right here, this is this unit right here is the starter. And in a second, I will bring out the replacement starter that we have to show you the comparison. But in order to take this out, we're going to take out this cable that connects it. We're going to flip back this rubber and take out the bolt that's keeping this down. And then there's two bolts um, that we need to take out. One of them, I believe, is this this long one right here in the back and then the other one is this 17 here and like just looking at the starter i didn't even recognize that this piece right here this gray part is actually part of the starter it's uh hold on i need you i need you to show you the new starter to show you what i'm talking about so these are these these are two different materials and right here this cutoff it looks like it's welded in there. At first, I thought this was actually part of the engine because it didn't look like separate parts. So this must be really old. Nonetheless, this is what the new starter looks like and that's what we're gonna take out. There are two bolts right here. This long one right here. This big one, the 17 right here. Then uh, a few cables and then this bolt right here. All right, so to help you guys out, we're going to take out this wire right here. In order to do that, there is a button at the bottom that we just need to push. Uh, it's already pushed actually, and slide it out. So just push the, bu the button. Oh, you can't even see the button anymore. But it's just a clip. After that, what you want to do is you want to take this wire out. And then we're going to take this cable out. Okay, and now we're going to take this cable out by pressing this button here. This is a bit harder with gloves on. Okay. Wait, I didn't expect that. So this entire thing comes out instead of just the part connected to the button. You press that one more time. And that's how it goes out. Huh. So it's just this entire thing that comes out. I thought it would only be the part inside that thing. Okay, next is the wires. I mean, next is the bolts. So we're going to get this one under this rubber gasket here. That's not what I meant, rubber cover. So we're gonna pull back that rubber cover and get access to this bolt. No, not to this bolt, to this nut. All right, so this is a aftermarket part. I guess they use odd number millimeters. So this is a 13. Usually they use uh, even numbers if you're not uh, initiated. And we're just going to take this out. Okay.
So that's the that's the nut. Actually, we don't even need to keep that because there's a nut on the replacement part. We're going to take this out. Uh, do they have a washer? I think they have a washer, but I'm just going to keep it just in case. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to take out this cable right here. This one also has a button right here. And now we're going to take out these bolts. This one right here is a 17 millimeter, I believe. And this one right here, we'll see. Probably so now to take off this bolt and this bolt, uh, we're gonna have to do some special things, especially if you didn't take out the uh, the intake manifold like we did. So if you didn't take out the manifold, what you usually need to do is you need to take a wobble extension like we have here. As you can see, it wobbles. And try to angle it in from this side. In between the manifold and where it connects, connect it in there and then On. This is really hard to do with gloves on. And then uh, loosen it. Now, if you have a uh, weak enough wobble joint, you might want to use one that's three fourths of an inch. Like we have, this is actually a half inch socket. This is a bit stronger. This this is a bit more useful if you need to. Uh, if you're worried that this tool that you got from Harbor Freight is gonna break, because you know Harbor Freight tools don't have a very strong reputation. So that's if you don't take off the intake manifold. Now, if you have access to it like we do, just go with your handy dandy Milwaukee and a socket, or you can just use a regular ratchet wrench and then take it out. I apologize for uh, any mistakes I make. My dad's rushing me a bit because we have to get going. drop this there we go so that's the 17 bolt okay we're gonna need to keep that because they don't have replacements and next we're going to get this one right here it is a 14 millimeter uh, and if you have access to it then just use a Milwaukee if you don't have access to it then use a wobble joint like they did or use um, a wrench that can get in there and take it out so let me get my 14 and let's go Actually, uh, let me use a shorter 14, just in case it gets stuck. Okay, so we have our 14. Please let this be a 14 and not... Okay, there we go. Okay, I have to loosen this with... Maybe you have to use an extension to loosen it. Okay, I don't want to break this, so I'm going to use an extension. All right, we have a wobble joint here. All right, so my dad, my dad told me to slow down because we have like a million of tools to get the job done. And this right here is probably the best setup to get it done. We have a regular socket and a regular ratchet wrench. We're just going to loosen it. Okay, and now I can get in with the Milwaukee and take it out probably. Or maybe I can actually take it out with my hand. Oh. This wrench got stuck. So that's what you have to be careful with. Uh, the space that you have for clearance, make sure that your wrench doesn't get stuck. Okay, let's try using the Milwaukee now. Okay. And there we go. So that's how long the 14 millimeter bolt is. If you need to account for when you take it out, make sure you have enough space to slide it out, finagle it through and take it out. So now we can take out the starter. Let's see if this is actually able to separate. Oh, 
Okay. Oh my god, I'm so I'm so glad. So if it wasn't able to separate, usually what I do is probably just knock it with a hammer, just just like to dislodge it. This is what it looks like. You can see that there's some parts on it where it does look like it actually is kind of like fused together. And this is the comparison to the new part. All right, <laughs> chickens. All right, so if you take a look at the part, you can see that they look nearly identical. The only difference that I can see here is that this part right here is shiny. This one is black. But on further inspection, it looks like this is not a genuine part. We thought before that this is probably not a genuine part. And if we look at the bolt size, actually, this right here is a 12. And um, this one right here is a, was a 13 when he took it out. So that's one reason why it's probably not genuine. Uh, and just other differences, like the, the, sh the size of this um, hole right here versus this tab, um, make it look like they're different. Also, the like the contours here, they're different. But the thing is, we know that this is a genuine part because the package says it's remanufactured. If you don't know what remanufactured means, it means that it's basically an original part that they've took and they've cleaned up and they've actually retested using uh, electrical tests to make sure it works again. Whereas aftermarket parts or, um, uh, yeah, aftermarket parts are not genuine parts. They're not made by the dealer. Whereas these ones are original. They're definitely made by the dealer. So we're going to replace this uh, starter. Uh, unfortunately though, my dad has to go right now. So we're going to end the video off here. So, hold on. I'm Maimon, and today I showed you how to remove the starter from a 2007, 2007 Honda Accord, which may or may not uh, apply to 2002 to 2007 because it might be a bit different. Like I said earlier, uh, that part with the... Whoa, it just suddenly reappeared. So like I said before, the intake manifold, you might have to take it out, uh, especially because this part is right here. But if you don't have this black unit which we're still not sure what it is my dad thinks it might be a, a dampener like a sound dampener or a vibration dampener if you don't have that all you need to do is pull back the intake manifold but we're going to show you how to replace the uh, starter tomorrow uh, and that should be a pretty simple job it's just the opposite as, as I always say installation is the reverse of removal and um, we'll see you then I remember I said in the beginning of the video that I will show you how to remove and replace so what we'll probably do is make that a part too so I'm Ayman, and thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. Like other videos on Ayman, especially the auto repair videos. I haven't done an auto repair video in quite a while, uh, just because I've been busy. I don't even remember the last auto repair video I've done. But in the future, we'll probably be doing more videos on this Accord. This is uh, we've done so many videos on Accords because uh, we had an Accord that we took apart. We have a Murals Accord that we actually uh, gave to a junkyard. And uh, now we have a third accord to work with. And we might actually use this accord, so it might see a lot of more videos. Uh, maybe we'll do some videos on the uh, Kira. Uh, maybe when I learn how to drive, we'll do more videos on the Honda Civic. But for now, oh yeah, and we're also going to replace the Toyota Prius engine after a long time. So if you haven't, go check out my videos on the Toyota Prius because last time we did that was probably two years ago. And I'll see you there. But for now, uh, I'm Ayman and signing out. Peace.